Hi y'all, as promised, this is video two in my series on the sexual abuse of adult straight men. Um, in the end of my last video, I mentioned something about the housewife case. Well, I'd like to introduce you to the women involved in uh, these two cases. Uh, th their names are David and Brian. Now, the more astute among you may have noticed that there aren't that many women named David or Brian, and you might be onto something. So these um, these two cases are interesting. Uh, the first one, um, they're both uh, what came to my attention. They both started as glory hole cases, and on I had seen uh, you know I've I've, I've known they've ex existed for a while, uh, but again, not my thing. So anyway, uh, I happened upon this one series and the couple of videos that I had seen had no audio or they either had uh, or they had um, sa uh, a soundtrack playing really loudly in the background so you couldn't hear anything and I'm like why would anyone want to watch some shit like that but anyway so as I uh, actually sat down to look at them to, to go you know, after the other two cases uh, I started to look more at some of these ones in the past that have rejected because of the stupid editing and stuff like that and so as I start watching these videos, I, I noticed that the what I assumed uh, as a working hypothesis is that the reason that, as, as I watched more of them, that some of them had sound, some of them had no sound, and some of them had uh, really loud music playing, is that this would be an excellent way to do forensic countermeasures. Uh, I mentioned that uh, when I was a cop I worked a couple of child porn cases, and that this kind of trait was there where uh, the ones that were produced and meant to be distributed uh, would frequently have the sound stripped out or music put over it or something along those lines to get rid of the underlying noise to make it difficult to listen to anything in the background that might be useful and they would you know they'd also use other forensic countermeasure techniques and so as I'm watching the the one series of uh, it's about 60 different uh, guys who are depicted being uh, taken advantage of maybe 50, 60, something along those lines. Uh, I don't have all the videos, so there are some I haven't seen. Um, I, you know, the ones that have sound, uh, where even if it's really difficult to pick out because of the, mu the music that's been put over top of it, I start really listening and paying attention to the details. I mentioned the Charles Ng, Leonard Lake serial killers in the last video, uh, because the way I found out who this guy is, or narrowed it down to where he was, is because of, uh, there were three images as a person turned where a partial phone number was on a t-shirt and then a different guy also had um, a phone number of the same um, area and so I realized that you know, what are the chances that two different guys would have uh, t-shirts that have phone numbers on them that have the same uh, you know the same starter so I started looking around and then there was a guy that came in with a mechanics outfit on so I started uh, I started pulling up all of the auto body shops and the mechanic shops looking for patches that would match. And anyway, I eventually managed to, to narrow it down uh, to about a 29 mile radius region of where this guy was. Uh, there were a couple of other clues that weren't particularly useful, but at least, you know, I, uh, they weren't, well, they weren't particularly useful, but they weren't nothing. And that was the presence of storms, uh, thunderstorms in the background. There are certain parts of the United States where you don't get storms. Uh, thunderstorms uh, very often at all like uh, where I've lived uh, we've had with lightning and thunder in the you know, 20 nearly 20 years I've lived here there have been two two thunderstorms where you know, lightning and you know the whole works this is very rare much more common as you go back east uh, you know on that, that side of the country anyway so uh, the state was uh, Missouri is where he is and um, the reason he's in jail now actually has nothing to do what got him caught has nothing to do with these videos it was he his name's David Cerna uh, you might look him up as officer David Cerna uh, the reason he had so much forensic countermeasure going on is because he was a cop so you know he was really working hard to get his material out there uh, but also to protect himself uh, so that way there's this plausible, it, I, I presume, I haven't talked to him, I'm guessing so that way it, there's some kind of a, when you watch it and you get these different uh, push, you know, the push and pull of the different things that are shown and not shown, what's edited and not edited, what's it overdubbed and not overdubbed, it, it has this, this way of doing it, but it's still a plausible pretense that it's real porn, 
uh, which is what it was being marketed as to um, you know the people who were the consumers of this material. So it was a glory hole, and uh, he would go on Craigslist or you know, places like that, and he had some picture, pictures of some woman, and uh, the the little sales pitch line was something like, you know, two pictures of you gets two pictures of me, and uh, then you get instructions, and it was, go here, and then there was a note, you know, I'm sorry, it was go here, and then you enter into the, into the door, and right on the left is Glory Hall. I don't know, there are easy way to avoid this kind of trick, just don't go to Glory Halls, which, uh, you know, why would you? But anyway, uh, I guess anonymous, uh, you know, free blowjob anonymously is, uh, sounds like a good deal. Uh, maybe it's too good to sound, maybe it's too good to be true. And um, so as I'm going to get all the videos of this guy that, that exist that I can find, I find one, it's a very short video because the guy caught wise to what was going on. By the guy, I mean the victim. Uh, he notices that there's a camera, which wasn't... Uh, other people had looked in that direction but hadn't seen the camera. It was disguised well, I suppose. But this guy is, you know, looking at it and he kind of looks back at the, because there's a door right there, so he looks at that and then he looks back and then he's like, hey, uh, there's something there. And, and, you know, so he pulls away from the glory hole and, you know, he's like, um, uh, what, what's going on? Am I going to bounce out of this motherfucker? Anyway, so he winds up realizing that Something untoward is happening, and uh, you know, so he zips up and he scoots. Very interesting. And also, the audio on this wasn't uh, disguised in any way. So when the guy came in, he was asking to make sure it was a woman. You know, show me your hair or something like that to prove that you know it's, it, it, it's a female. And so I guess the guy had like something back there that you could flash in front of the glory hole that made a plausible pretense of some type that, that there was a woman on the other side. Anyway. Uh, I, it was, these were difficult for me to track down, uh, primarily because it was difficult for me to believe that anyone would go there. I mean, you know, it's like, really? People do this? And, and they think that an anonymous person from the internet is going to be what they say there? It, it, it's one of those you kind of think, can anybody really be this stupid? But, but you know, I, I was young and horny once, and I've been to bars, and, and as the need to get laid goes up, the, uh, the extent to which you're willing to inquire uh, goes down, your standards go down, so I, I can I can understand how it happened. And then in some of the ones where, that was the only one where he had no uh, no attempt to disguise anything other than who he was, because he was on the other side of the glory hole, which wasn't shown, um, where the person made uh, some comment that would indicate that the person thinks that there is a woman on the other side of the glory hole. But in some of the other ones, he had used uh, some some techniques, uh, the music and whatnot, but still the people, if you listen carefully, and I had to spend hours and hours and hours, sometimes playing the same three seconds, you know, I'd cut it out and play it on a loop for hours before I eventually would figure out what was being said. And some of them, you, you would hear something like, you know, uh, you know I, I, wanted, I wanted to see your pussy. Um, one guy is like, I don't care if you're if you're on your period, I just want to fuck you, you know, things that you would expect guys would say um, if they thought it was a woman, uh, whereas there are some other ones that try to, that, uh, made by different people that have the same kind of genre, and I've listened to those, and you can tell that they know that it's a guy on the other side, because instead of saying, you know, something that would be gender specific, they'll say something in general like, oh, you know, you're the best person uh, who's ever given me head, or uh, you know, th things where you, you, you know that they are aware what what's going on. This is a, a blowjob on the download. Now, whether or not these are lawfully recorded, and lawfully intercepted communications by the person on the other side, I don't know. So I don't know if the person who's being recorded knew at the time that he was being recorded, but I at least could figure out that in many of the cases, at least, they were aware that it was a guy on the other side, not, not a woman. So in that sense, there wasn't any uh, sexual abuse, even though there might be some kind of making pornographic or some kind of voyeurism statute could be violated, or unlawful interception of communications, or something along those lines, you know, the, the surreptitious recording. Back to surreptitious recordings, which is what got the uh, David Cerna, Officer David Cerna, arrested from Wentzville. And it was, he had put in a restroom at some convenience store, a uh, hidden camera, a spy cam, catch people to go you know, use the facilities, and uh, this came to the attention of a local investigative journalist who went to all the bathrooms in the business area 
until they found the one that matched what was in the video, and then they forwarded that to the police, and the police investigated, and he had pictures of men, of boys, uh, uh, videos of recordings of that, and as they are you know, serving the search warrants and getting more of his uh, materials, they find that while he was on duty, he would have a disguised camera, I, don't, I think it was from a phone, I don't quite know how he pulled this off, but whatever, uh, that he would wear while he would molest, use his official position to molest uh, teen, teenage boys, some of whom underage, some of whom over the over age. They would be uh, thoroughly searched, by which I mean molested, and he would pull out their waistbands to expose you know, their, their genitals, and I guess he would, I don't know if he'd lean, or, I don't know how it worked. Obviously, I've not seen the videos. Um, they're not going to be released for a good reason. If they were, I wouldn't watch them because it's, it involves minors. But anyway, um, and he would capture that somehow on his camera phone. I don't know. I have no idea how, how he managed to pull that off. Uh, and then it made some of the searches that he had done in people's homes. Uh, the parents of, of the you know, people who were involved uh, suspicious. You know, when this came out, they're like, "Oh, that makes that completely explains why when he was at our house for some." We would call, he had to go search our children's rooms, uh, you know, goofy things like that. Um, one one of the young boys, I say young boys, they were teenagers, so far as I know, uh, they were teenagers. One of them was mentally disabled, just uh, not a good person, definitely not someone you want to have in any position, whatever, of authority. But his was difficult to track down because he did put a good deal of effort, except for a couple of mistakes here and there, into making sure that anything that would put you wise, other than, you know, the the marketing tactic of straight guys don't know it's a guy, you know, which is a very common trope in pornography about, you know, the gay uh, guy is, is uh, I'm sorry, the straight guy suddenly discovers that he wants to do something with a guy, you know, because that, that happens. By the way, just on the porn thing, how they're incompetent. These uh, straight gay porn thing, you know, where this gay guy gets the straight guy thing, um, <clears throat> Invariably, they, they have a big problem casting for this. It, it, this isn't always true, but a very common way that the casting was, will go is you'll have well, you know, the two guys, the one gay guy, the one person playing the gay guy and the one person playing the straight guy, I should say, and they will choose the nelliest, queeniest, you know, most sissified uh, gay guy they can find to play the straight guy. It's like, hi, uh, my name is Lucinda. I'm totally heterosexual. Uh, I really love pussy, just love pussy so much, eating the pussy, fucking the pussy, just playing with the pussy, oh my god. Oh, hey there, sir, would you mind fucking me in my ass like a cheap whore? You know, like, oh my god. I hate to say it, but when I watch some of this stuff, I, and the, sh the thought should not cross my mind, but it does, and I'm like, you know, ISIS has been throwing the wrong people off the buildings, is all I can say. <laughs> I know it's terrible, and I'm like, I don't want that to happen because I'm not in favor of people being murdered, but it, the thought crosses my mind, and I have to like, no, put it aside, but it, it, but it crosses my mind. I'm like, mm. <laughs> Anyway, it's just, I, I don't know, oh, well, I do sort of know why this happens in the gay community. It's because, um, it's a joke that I tell, there are only two types of people in the world, straight people, I'm sorry, gay people and gay people in denial. Which, because of the way I phrased it, you can always prove. If you ask them, are you gay? They say, yes, gay. They say, no, denial. Catch-22 there. But, you know, uh, the the belief that uh, heterosexuality, you get a lot of this now with the social justice warriors, that, you know, it's it's just, it's like gender. It's just very fluid. You know, just whatever happens to walk by should be equally sexually attractive to you. And, and you know, just, just go with the flow, dude. And, you know, like, because that's what you think the world, how the world operates, that does not actually map on to how the world operates. Um, and to the extent, and, oh, and by the way, like, whenever they're with these straight guys, you know, they're always, they kiss and they caress them real romantically. I mean, it's really disgusting, even for me, and I'm, I'm gay, I mean, like, ugh, puke. Uh, you, you know, you try that with a real straight guy, even if he's going to let you give him head, go right ahead and let me know how that works out. And I, I know gay people will say things like, oh, if I'm with a gay guy and I suck, he sucks. I'm like, no, shut up, you lying bitch, go the fuck away. Uh, or, you know, they'll have like this, mas there's this massage um, trope thing. And so the, the, you know, the guys never know what's happening to them. And then suddenly they realize, oh my God, I'm getting a blowjob. 
Uh, and now this is, mind you, after they've been face down and the guy's like rimmed them and he stuck a dildo in their ass and then when they roll over, you know, and he touches their dick, like, Yo, dude, what are you doing? You know, because obviously uh, the thing that's not going to bother straight guys is the one thing that actually most bothers straight guys about gay guys. It, it's the want to fuck them in the ass. So apparently if you just shove like a glass dildo and, you know, some M&Ms, popcorn, dirt from the ground, a sofa cushion in there because it's so loose, uh, straight guys be like, oh, I just, I had no idea. I didn't even know anything was in there. But the moment you touch the dick, that's when they'll be like, whoa, dude, this is just, what? This is weird. It's just, it's super annoying. I don't like the way straight guys are portrayed in pornography, in case you haven't noticed. But in any event, um, so I, I managed to track, track down from a combination of a partial telephone number, uh, which was to a, uh, one of them was to a towing company. It actually is a partial telephone number and a partial slogan, so that that helped. And uh, then matching patches to narrow down because they had two locations within about 30 miles of each other. And so I was like, mm, I don't know which one. It is. Anyway, I track it down, and so then I just start going through uh, a whole bunch of other stuff I want to talk about, looking for uh, well, you know, Craigslist stuff in the area and all all this other stuff to to try to see if I can figure out how this is being accomplished. I'm just spitballing here just to see what I can. Uh, you know, just a trawl to see what I could find that looked uh, suspicious to me. And uh, that's when I happened upon an article about his arrest and conviction, uh, which was not immediately obviously related to the videos that, that uh, originally got me put onto this, because it's actually two separate criminal matters, well, three separate criminal matters. It was the, the recordings of the people in the public restroom, there were the recordings of the police officers at the police station and their changing rooms, and the recordings of people uh, whom he had arrested and had uh, searched. Uh, on that point, I used to get asked when I was on the job by some straight friends, gay friends alike, or I should say friends, people I know, if uh, if you ever, do you ever get, uh, when you're searching someone, do they ever have a big dick, you know, things like that. And I'm like, well, the mindset of a cop when, when he's searching someone or she is searching someone is not quite the same as the mindset of a person who has seen such things in pornography. I'm thinking of the shooting death of Mark Coates and how to position myself. Uh, you know, having at least two points of contact while I'm conducting the search, having the person off balance, and the sec the body is uh, sectioned off into certain you search in certain quadrants in a particular way, uh, and from certain angles, uh, so that way you have a tactical advantage if the person decides to attack you. It's how you stay alive. So I'm not thinking about their anatomy. I'm thinking about looking for the stuff I'm after and being in a position where if they decide to get froggy, I'm in a, I'm in a, a good position with, with good leverage to you know, really resist their attempt and take the fight to them. That's my mindset. Uh, also, people were like, oh, you have handcuffs? That's hot. And I'm like, yeah, it's got blood caked in there. There's bits of skin from meth addicts I've had to fight with in arrest. Yeah, that's really hot. Let me tell you, nothing turns me on more than thinking about the caked and dried blood in my handcuffs and having to rinse those fuckers out, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's hot, dude, you, you go with that. You just, things that, I guess if you don't work in it, you wouldn't think about that, because it, it's like on TV. You uh, turn around, cuff them, and, and it's done, you know. You, you, you wrestle for a second, then somehow you use your, your special cop maneuver, and you twist them just the right way, and their hand flies behind their back, and you cuff it without problem, and then the other hand just goes there, too. It, it takes, a, it, you know, a good cuffing job uh, on a resistant person, on a non-compliant active resistor should take seven, six seconds of screen time tops and you should be done. It's not like that in the real world, I hate to tell you. Um, so the second video, uh, the second, I'm sorry, not second video, the second guy uh, is named Brian, and I'm going to screw up his last name, Denim Moisture, Denim Mostier, Denim Mostier. Brian, the person who I hope spends the rest of his life in prison, I think that's the translation of his last name, he has uh, somewhere upwards of six to seven hundred victims over a period of about four or five years. He had other videos I didn't know about, uh, but I mean I know about them now. Um, the ones I watched were glory holes. So uh, after I figured out who we, all the stuff going on there, I was looking at different uh, fora um, after uh, the arrest finally happened, which happened about a month ago, and then he was arraigned shortly after he's entered. He's officially entered his not guilty plea a couple weeks ago. Well, I guess a little longer than that now because I've been, I've not exactly been uh, punctual in getting this, these videos out. But anyway, uh, and so it hit some of the jock forums, and they talk about it, and they're like, "Oh, there's no way you didn't know it was the guy. 
could never happen to me. And on the arrest photo, people were looking at his Adam's apple and saying, oh, you couldn't fool anyone. The way he would do it was, um, he was, he, I'm sorry, he was a housewife to a military spouse, uh, a military service member of which he was the supposed uh, spouse. And he would get all femmed out and he would be behind a glory hole door and he would, oh, oh you're a nice, effective voice. I mean, he, it's not convincing to me, but then again, I'm, I, there's an, a, there's a, there's an asymmetry in knowledge. I know that there's a, a, a bit going on here that, you know, someone's being taken for a ride. Uh, that's one of the things when you're told you're watching pornography is that you think everyone is in, in on the story. But then if you step back from that and realize that the straight guys are acting a little too like straight guys, uh, that, you know, if they've had a couple of drinks, there's some club music going on you can hear in, in the background, um, in some of the videos, this is a plausible case, particularly if you know you're rather horny, which I presume they are if they're at a glory hole, they haven't been getting whatever they needed, wherever they, they came from, that this could be, and in fact was, a sufficiently uh, good pantomime to have suckered in hundreds and hundreds of guys over years. Um, and then this person would have the a camera on the outside so you can watch the straight guy. And one of the reasons I don't like these videos is because because they're not porn, as it turns out, because they're actual assault videos. This is what you see. Except you get it from a slightly different angle. I mean, you, you don't see anything. Like, the pants don't usually don't go down. Just, you know, they unzip it and they put it in. So I don't know why people are watching this because I'm like, it's just like a... It's a video of a guy standing on a wall. For all I know, the other side of the, the uh, room is no one there. And he's just standing there and occasionally goes, uh. I mean, who knows? So I'm like, I don't know why this is turning anybody on, but if, if, watching people stare at a wall does it for you, then <laughs> who am I to judge? You knock yourself out, buddy. But he would have the camera on his side of it, too. Uh, actually, had several cameras. Um, and he would... Eh, eh, through it. I'm like, oh, God. Once again, you know, ISIS throwing the wrong people off the buildings. So I never had any use for that because even though you could see what was going on, this queen was so fucking annoying that I was like, Ugh, I just can't, can't deal with any of this. But again, I gave these a, you know, a new look and I decided to go through his videos of which there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, so once I started going through them, I'd get more and more recommended lists and they were uh, two different categories of videos that he would do. I mean, they're all the same abuse type, but, uh, ones are the slightly different format. One was the glory hole. And in some of those, you would have the transition from the glory hole to when the people are sitting in a chair blindfolded. He would hand them the blindfold through the glory hole. Why no one ever figured out, hey, maybe this isn't a woman. I don't know, but whatever. And they would put on the goggles that had been blacked out or put on the blindfold or whatever. And then he would come out and he would tie them, you know, to the chair. And, you know, blow them and you know, do the whole rubbing all the, ugh, ugh. don't watch this shit trust me it's, it's really icky and uh, in a couple of those the guys who were being blown clearly knew that uh, it was this guy because he was speaking in his normal voice once again he has some real actual porn videos where there uh, people in it are aware of what's going on and then these other ones so that gives me a good contrast that you know not all of them are the same which is really weird when you have a really niche fetish kind of video that you would have this major alteration on the theme that you've been plugging for years. Now, he was arrested for two different reasons, uh, by two different sovereigns. He's been arrested by both the state of Florida and by the United States for the Southern District, in the Southern District uh, of Florida, the Southern District Court of Florida. Uh, when he was arrested uh, by the state authorities, he was in a hotel room with drugs, bondage gear, and an underage boy. Uh, so he's, you know, if convicted, he's going to be doing a lot of time for just that. Uh, although the way some of these cases go, he might wind up getting more time for the drugs than for the molestation, but priorities. And then he was arrested by the federal authorities for the unlawful in, uh, interception of communications uh, because of the report. He would tell them that no, they're not being recorded. Uh, I would never do that. I'm. A, I'm a military spouse. I wouldn't. I would never. You know that kind of shit. And in some of the other videos, he would do drag. He would be in drag, and this is before the methamphetamine really addled him and skinned him out. So his Adam's apple wasn't as visible when he was chunkier. 
And uh, then when they would get in the video, he'd take off the drag. Uh, and then that's when the video would start after they're in the chair and he's taking the drag off. So that way you don't see, once again, this is an edit to cut out the means by which he perpetrates the crime. And it took a long time before I realized that what was going on there was what it was. Because as I said, many cases are broken because of noticing that within a given context, something that looks otherwise innocuous it just is sufficiently different uh, that it gives you a reason to look more deeply to scratch, you know, it's beneath the surface. But that's no guarantee that just because you find a couple of weird things that there's any kind of illicit activity going on. People do lots of weird things. And so it really took watching this entire library, or the majority of this library, to really start working out, particularly when you saw the uh, the parts that didn't conform to what the script was, if, if this were just a long-going porn series where this is the niche thing, where he wouldn't be all queened out, where he wouldn't be talking in a normal voice. And you could see the actor, well in these cases they were actors, these people knew they were being recorded and they were having a conversation. Uh, and you, so anyway, the ones that the, the government is worried about are the ones where they were blindfolded in the chairs. I don't know that they've paid much attention to the glory hole portion which precedes it in some cases. I'm sure, I'm sure there's more to the case than has uh, been disclosed in the indictment. But in any event, that's uh, that took because you know, you, well, let's see, you figure anywhere from I hate to tell you this, ladies, but anywhere from like three minutes to sometimes you know twenty, thirty, forty minutes, these people would be there uh, doing their doing the deed, and you've got hundreds, nearly. He's got uh, six hundred of the one where they're in the chair, and then you know a couple hundred where they're in on the uh, the glory hole part. So there are some redundant cases in there and some have been edited and put into compilation so I haven't tracked them person for person, you know, victim to victim so I, I don't have an exact count but it's uh, 600, 700 distinct men who have been uh, portrayed in there only uh, only some of them being aware that they're on camera one and uh, two that it's a guy. Most of them were both unaware that it was male and that they were being recorded. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention this in the last one. I was talking about the medical exam. Uh, the one guy I mentioned, he didn't get caught by the cops. He got murdered by one of the men he had molested, uh, who bludgeoned him to death and set him on fire. Uh, but the other, you know, this is the uh, the the uh, other guy, the one who I was talking about doing the uh, he was doing the percussion across the abdomen up over trob space. To, and he was the one who was doing the really making the really good go of doing a medical exam. The way he got caught as a member of the janitorial staff, uh, because the guy failed to put away all of his video equipment that he would use to record, you know, the webcam and everything he would use to record, uh, that were all focused on the uh, examination table, the janitorial staff member, uh, had seen a guy in there earlier naked, which isn't all that uncommon, I guess, in a doctor's office, people have changed clothes. But then afterwards, he realized uh, when he went in that there was video graphic equipment that was present and so he called uh, the authorities and they came and investigated and that's how he wound up getting caught. Um, so in the two cases that I'm primarily talking about in this video, when I said trough space, that was the part with the gastric bubble where when he should have heard timpani, he heard dullness and, and there was dullness to percussion and he did not uh, he did not follow up with one of the three questions that you would expect to hear. Uh, I'm sorry, with any of the questions you expect to hear, it's not one of three questions, but, one, but with the questions you expect to hear, just to uh, see if, the, if, if there's anything benign going on or if it's possibly an inflamed uh, swollen spleen or pleural effu effusion. But anyway, that's how that one guy got caught. The, the other guy got murdered. Uh, the police officer got caught because he put the spy cam in a public bathroom and a journalist caught wise, uh, caught hip to it and uh, did his investigative bit and f was able to track down where it was happening contacted the authorities and that's how that got rolling. And this guy was caught uh, for a number of reasons. None of them was caught um, because of the videos of their crimes that they had posted uh, on the internet, which is weird. It, it, I mean, I can't complain because I knew they were out there, some of these were out there for years and I never watched them. But uh, the fact that some of these things will have hundreds of thousands of views means that there are lots and lots of, I presume, mostly gay men, but probably some women maybe some straight guys too, or bike, I don't know, whatever, um, who have watched this and have you know, been taming the shrew by themselves, believing that what they're watching are porn actors, just engaged in doing what porn actors do, 
but in a slightly more realistic version with guys, straight guys who behave like straight guys. And uh, it's not true. They've actually been jacking off to uh, material that depicts actual sexual assaults. And the uh, if you put in, in these various uh, groups, uh, like the jock physical guy, the male physical guy, the dumb straight guy guy, you know, these, these kinds of things, you will find just page after page after page after page after page after page after page on like Pornhub, PornMD, RedTube, XTube, you know, all the, the, the porn sites. And uh, so there are all these straight guys out there whose pictures are on a half of the internet they're not going to see because they're not Googling gay porn, I imagine. Uh, and they don't even, many of them don't even know that they have been sexually assaulted, which raises an interesting ethical dilemma. Uh, they think they got blowjobs from guys or what, you know, whatever happened to have been. And they can go on the rest of their lives so long as they don't find out, and they'll never have that, you know, that feeling, that trauma that comes realizing that, uh, that that you would expect that they would have in some of the cases if they were to learn that what had happened to them was, you know, they've been tricked. So now the police have an ethical problem of whether or not you notify them, and even if you can't find them, which is a big question, whether you even should, because on the one hand, you want the crimes to be brought to justice, but on the other hand, if a victim has been victimized and doesn't know it, you're telling them is what's going to cause the injury because they're unaware of it now, which is an interesting interesting thing. And all I can say is I'm glad I'm not one of the official investigators on any of these cases who has to make that decision. I'm just a guy on the internet without any fancy forensic tools, just using my old, you know, uh, gumshoe skills that I used to you know, use day in and day out when I was on the job. Uh, if, so if you have any other cases out there that you think might be a little goofy and you want someone to look into it, just let me know. I might. Don't send me anything illegal. Uh, don't. I'm serious. Don't do that. Um, I may or may not view all the materials depending on what the first couple looks like. And the reason for it is I'm already working on about three other three other cases right now. And there are more hun hundreds more videos to look through. And it takes a long time, particularly because... Uh, it's not simp simply a matter of watching it once. You have to watch some of these dozens and dozens of times to pick out that, li that to look for that small little teeny tiny detail that you just file away in the back of your brain and says, okay, remember this, pay attention to the rest of the structure in other videos. Or it might be hard to pick out, it's hard, sometimes hard to understand what they're saying. Uh, the, they don't usually use very good video equipment, so uh, logos and things on shirts, that would be useful. You're not going to catch in a lot of frames unless you're very lucky. And, uh, you know, this, these four cases I've been working on for, or these, I say cases, like, like I'm back on the job. These four things I've been, I've been talking about, I've looked at over the course of, you know, many months going through this. You know, sometimes you know, six hours at a stretch, just watching it, watching it, and watching it. And then, uh, one of the things that I do is, sometimes ones that have sound, I'll mute it. Just so I'm not, dis I'm not distracted by what the sound is telling me. And I'm not letting that color the visual cues, which can happen. And then uh, on the you know the other side of that is that I will turn on the sound and not watch the video. So I just am listening, and I will alternate in that too when things are difficult because I want to make sure that what I'm seeing is purely what's appearing on the screen, uninfluenced by any 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 kind of uh, immediate bias that might be there, and you know, any kind of contextual sounds that are there that might distort it. And it's very useful to apply these these kinds of things because. What can affect your perception of something is very, uh, can be very subtle. And for those who don't believe it, I will just tell you, uh, every moving image that you see on your computer screen is an optical illusion. It's not happening. It's just exploiting a part of your, uh, an aspect of your brain called the flicker fusion threshold. Uh, that's, that's what you're seeing. Uh, so it's not, you're not actually seeing any movement. It, you're just tricked into thinking you see movement by a clever use of uh, refresh rate. Um, every image that you see off of your computer is not what you actually see. For a number, of, this is why optical illusions, many optical illusions, occur in the first place because of something called lateral inhibition. It's the way your brain conserves energy when processing optical stimuli. Uh, so what you see is not a true representation of reality. But even if that, even if lateral inhibition weren't a thing, and you were really getting all the information, uh, you still have blind spots that you don't notice. But even if that weren't true, every image that you see is not what is actually picked up by your eyes. It is, this is the power of the brain to deceive you. The images that you see, if you saw them as they really are, would be upside down. But your brain has learned to rotate all these images so that way they appear to be upright to you when, in fact, everything that you see is ass backwards. 
So, uh, for those people who think they have a great degree of independence of mind unlike the lesser mortals, you're deluding yourself. It's very easy to trick people. And unless uh, you're very careful about that, particularly when you need to be careful when you're studying materials like this, it's very easy to lead yourself astray. So that's all I've got to say about those two, uh, well, those four cases. I'm working on some others. We'll see what happens once I uh, convince myself that I'm ready to start watching through some of this shit again. All right. Um, you guys have a great day.